Hi, welcome to my channel. I am Abhishek. In today's video, we are going to see how we can create a REST API documentation. So the first question arises, why we need an API documentation? To answer this, basically uh, our API is going to consume by a, a wider audience such as front-end developers or peer developer. So in order to consume those API by them, they need an endpoint details or body params or path variable what we have used inside our REST API. So API documentation is end-to-end -end guide uh, where it explains all these questions. So inside our Spring Boot world, we have a, a Swagger library which deals with this uh, details only. It provides you all the details, all the parameters needed in order to consume those. So let's see how we can integrate in our Spring Boot application. So first I will take you to the uh, Swagger official uh, repository inside the GitHub. It's under name of Spring Fox. Um, this is the small guidance about this library. You can go through it. So to get, get started with this library, you need an, uh, this dependency to be added in your project. Same you can find inside the ambient repository as well. So let's copy this and integrate in our project. So I will go to the pom.xml. So inside the uh, dependencies tag, before this dependencies, you can add this. And after adding, uh, just refresh, uh, reload your Maven dependency. And in my case, I have, um, I guess I have already added so in your case, if you are adding the first time, you just need to reload and do Maven goal execute like clean and install. So it will get added to your project. So let's after adding, let's uh, hit the run button. <coughs> so it's building. Yeah. So project is, it's getting up. Now after installation, you just need to go uh, your API context path. In my case, it is API and flash swagger UI. So you see, this is the API documentation. It is automatically generated by the swagger library. So we just plug this uh, library in our project. It is scanned through the, all the controllers, uh, all the endpoints, and it come up with the this case where we can see we have defined inside the student controller as a post to create a new student, delete, get, put, all those things. You can even execute from here. So let's say I'm interested in find all method. So inside the find all method, it tells what are the parameter needed and how the response look like uh, if we use this API. So let's try it out and execute. You see, we got an, a response body as a one object. So let me see in database also. So you see in database, we have only one object. So that's why in the response body, we are getting as one with ID three, let's hit uh, another API. I'm interested in this. So it says we need an uh, ID as a mandatory parameter. Let's try it out. Now give the ID three because we have ID three in our uh, backend, sorry, our database. So let's execute. So it returned exactly one. Even you can delete also from here. So let's call delete. Try hit the parameter, execute. You see, it gave the response also, student deleted. And this is the response header. So if I go to the database and just refresh, you see the object has been deleted. So this is the a very cool um, in terms of generating the API documentation. Now this documentation I can directly pass to the my front-end team or my peer developer. They can come to know uh, what are the essential thing is needed in order to consume this API. So that's it guys for this video. If you have any questions, any queries, please post in the comment section. I will address those. Or if you came directly to this video, 
I recommend you to uh, watch my previous video where we have uh, created a REST API from the scratch. We have also handled the exceptional exception handling using controller advice and other details. I will also attach this in description section. So thanks for watching. We'll meet in next video with new topic. Thank you.